has already been laid that foundation is Jesus Christ in other words nothing else is going to work there's no other foundation upon which you can build your life than Jesus Christ let's say worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever see.
the third at a break of dawn the sun of heaven rose again oh tremble dead where is your sting the angels run for Christ the King sing us out Oh, praise the name of the Lord. 
into 2023. Got a whole week in here. The only issue I'm having is remember to write 2023. And it's good you're here to worship together. And that's why I want us to think about this morning is, is being together. Because so many times in our culture, it's, you know, doing things on your own. Yeah, Dave's mentioned I just went through a hip replacement. And, yeah, I had to rely on my wife. She has to drive me around, and she had to do things for me. Yeah, it's frustrating. But God designed us to need each other. When he created people, he created man and woman as a pair, as a couple, as a team. And then he gave them children, a family. And as it goes through history, we have the whole nation of Israel. It's tribes. That it's a community. And as Christians, we are to be a community. We are here to support each other. And that's why we gather together Sunday mornings right here to support each other, to encourage each other because of what you may go on through the week, you may need it. Or what you're going to face this week, you need to be prepared for. And we, and we need to realize that we need each other. As we praise God together, it has an impact on us knowing we're not alone doing that. Because too many times we think we are alone on things, that we don't have an impact. We aren't able to do anything on our own. And a lot of times we can't. And we need each other as God designed. So when we worship, people can see the impact when you leave this place on your life, how you talk, how you treat them, you know, hearing his word, what he has to say to you, and, and, and doing it. When we give our tithes and offerings, you know, does it really matter? Yes. When we pull our offerings together, the impact it can have here around us in the world, it makes an impact. And people can tell if you're worshiping God by the way you act, by the way you live throughout the week. And people know that. God wants us to shine his light out. He wants people to see him in us. He wants us to display his characteristics of love, forgiveness, mercy, and kindness as we leave this place. And so all the things we do in worship help us. Yeah, God deserves and wants our praise and wants to, us to be in his presence. He doesn't need our money, but he wants it because of the impact he can have in our world. Our world operates on money. It's sad, but that's what it, the world is like. And so I want us to think about we need each other to work together because we're part of a church, we're part of a worldwide kingdom belongs to Christ. So let's be praying this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We are able to be here because in this country we have the freedom to worship you and help us to take advantage of that because we need it. We need your presence in our lives here. And as we go throughout the week, you've given us your Holy Spirit to help us through life. And so we call upon that so many times because of what we have to face in this world, the things we see, the things we hear, the things we experience. We need your love in, your, in our lives to help us get through those things. And we need your love to help us to show other people who you are because you sent your son into this world to die for each and every person in this world. And they need to know it. This world needs to know it so badly. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. Glad to have everybody here with us this morning. Those online, thanks for tuning in and being with us and watching online. Just a couple things I want to uh, let you know about, give thanks for. Of course, you saw Keith. We were talking. I've been praying for Keith Wilson. He's our new worship leader. Uh, officially starting today. Well, he started Tuesday this week, but up here leading uh, with us and that. Excited to have him here. Definitely be a part of that and uh, uh, get to know him today. Or, you know, go up and see him. But I also wanted to let you know uh, on two weeks from today, Sunday to the 22nd, Keith is going to have a time right after second service for anybody that wants to figure out what worship team is about or what happens back here in the booth. If you're a part of that, he's inviting you to be there. Or if you'd like to figure out, maybe that's a way that I can serve. I want to see what's going on, being on the cameras or up on the praise team. On the 22nd, right after our service here, he would like to meet with you and talk with you and kind of let you know where things are going and everything. So put that on your calendar. Definitely, he would love uh, to let you know that. Again, uh, I want to let you know this week, 
week, we're starting back up our, uh, our different youth programs. Tuesday, the fifth graders are going to be meeting, and, and Wednesday, junior high, and Thursday, back into high school. So if you know people that age, have people that age, let them know it's starting back up. We're excited about uh, those things that are happening. And, and where we could use your help right now is we are putting together a committee. As you know, uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day were a little different for us. We had pipelines, water lines break here, and it kind of flooded out, so we had to cancel our services. And people have been helping get things ready, get things cleaned up. Well, we're in the phase now where we're going to have to start picking like paint and carpet that's going to be replaced in some of the rooms and that. So we need a, a committee and it needs to start, well, today <laughs> in one sense, gathering or being on that committee. And if that's something that you would like to be a part of, you, you would like to do, um, don't leave today without talking with me or Clint. Where's Clint? There he is right there. That young man right over there, Clint Warnisher. Uh, see one of us because we want to get it started like this week because you know it, there's there's the time for picking this stuff out uh then once you pick it out you got to find the contractors they got to put the bids got to do all that so you know we we don't want to be eight months nine months down the road doing this we want to get this moving as fast as we can so if you would like to be a part of that committee see one of us here today uh because it's going to be starting right away and we're excited about uh, that and uh and what god can do uh and 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 he is going to be doing so uh again thanks for your help and prayers any questions about anything going on just let me know uh um, but I want to start this new series off here um, that we're going to be, you know, doing over the next several weeks. And I was reading this story this week about a, a Buddhist that had decided to come to America, he decided to go to New York. First time ever being in New York. And everybody told him, you got to stop at one of the hot dog vendors and get one of their hot dogs, you know, that's there. And so he's like, okay, he gets in New York. He's out there. He sees all these hot dog vendors everywhere. And he picks one and he goes up and he says, I would like a hot dog with everything on it. And he gives the vendor a $20 bill. And the vendor starts to put together his hot dog, puts everything on it and hands him the hot dog. And the Buddhist just kind of stands there, you know, and, and uh, um, waits, you know, kind of waits for some money to come back. And he's waiting and it doesn't happen. And he looks to the vendor and he says, hey, where's my change? And the vendor looks at him and says, change comes from within. I know, I'm sorry. I have not told a dad joke all year. I had to get it out of my system, you know, but thank you for that and, and stuff. But, but change, we've talked a lot about change. Don't worry, I'm not going to put you through a change exercise. But I want us to take a look at change because, it, you know, we started this year off and we've been talking about if we want to be who God wants us to be, there's probably some change, every single one of us, that we need to have within our life. And things change whether we want them to or not. I want to put you through a little test here. I'm going to show you some pictures. If you recognize these pictures, what they are. Some of them have their labels on them, or you've purchased these or had these, you know, or you know what they are. Just raise your hand, okay? And, and so how about this first one? Has anyone ever purchased this before in their life? Just two. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Two of you at blackjack gum and stuff like that. It was popular for a while. How about this? And he, yeah, okay, a little, you know, cracking that wax off of that head and drinking that, you know, sugar water right there. It didn't matter what flavor, color it was. There was no flavor. It was just sugar. Okay, excellent, excellent stuff. How about, did you ever go to these kind of places, restaurants that had these little jukebox? Yeah. I mean, today there, some of you might have because it's more nostalgic, but you know, that used to be pretty common that would be when you'd go into restaurants and, and that. How many of you had your milk delivered this way? Or can remember grandma talking about milk bean. Let's, okay, if you don't want to give out your true age, all right, and, and stuff. How many of you wore these growing up? PF Flyers. I mean, those are going to make you basketball players right there, the best of the best. If you wore those, you were in the in crowd, you know. Uh, forget Nike, let me tell you. How ma Here's a tough one. How many of you understand what this is? Just raise your hand if you understand what this is. <laughs> Sorry, I was laughing. Keith's the only one put his hand up. Keith Wilson back there with it. This, usually this is more so when you had the party lines. This is a telephone number where you would have the name before a number or a word before the number. So you'd pick up, there'd be a party line, you know, I want, you know, olive, one, da, 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 whatever it is, or you would say what that was. So I didn't know how many people would be familiar with that one. How about any of you collect these? Yeah, S and H screen stamps, you know, collect those babies, put them in the booklets, you know, and then you get so many booklets, then you got that, met, you know, you can go and look in that catalog of trade in and kids never got to pick, you know, what they wanted, but I'm not bitter about it. Okay, who knows what these are right here? Anybody just shout it out. 
Roller skate keys, yep, roller skate keys that you would have, you know, to lock on and all that other kind of stuff. Things have changed over time, have they not? And they continually change. And some of the changes that have come in, we like, we're okay with, we're happy. Some of the changes that have come into our life, we don't like, we're not happy, wish, wish we would go back to. But when it comes to our walk, when it comes to our life, when it comes to who God wants us to be, the men and women of God that he created and want us to be, there has to be change in our life. Things have to change. So we're going to spend the next several weeks looking at changes that need to be made in our lives that God wants us to make. And, and, and today what I want to do is I'm going to talk more just so about, you know, uh, I want to give an introduction to this and, and, and see what it is. But we have to remember, when I talk about change, I realize we like change and we don't like change. People like different kinds of change. But it's what Christ is about. I mean, you know, we, we have a purpose statement here, you know, why we do what we do, you know, we, 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 we try to help people understand how to love him, serve them, disciple all. And if we're going to need to love God the way that God really wants us to love him, there's things that are going to have to change. If we're going to serve people around that God puts around us, there's going to have to be some changes in our hearts so we can serve him the way that Christ served and demonstrated. If we're going to go out and make disciples, there's going to have to be changes in our life. God wants that change to be there. And, and that's what we're about, making change. In this transformation, I mean, depending on where you are and your walk in your life with God, it has different names and called by different things. It's called salvation when you first step across that line, making Christ your Savior. It's called sanctification when you have made Him that and you're continuing to mature and grow into the men and women God He wants you to be. All different names. Conversion, you know, it's called starting over, born again, restart, whatever you want to do. And I'm, I'm sure there's several of you that have your own stories about transformation. Uh, you know, God came in, God changed, Christ changed my life this way or that way because that's what he specializes in. He gives people these new starts, this fresh start within their life. And there's tons of scriptures that talk about this. And, and over the next several weeks, we'll be looking at that. But today, I want to just look at one of them right here when Paul was teaching to the Ephesians. He said this in Ephesians, starting verse 22. You've learned the truth that is in Jesus, meaning when Jesus said, I am the truth, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, you've learned the truth, okay? And you've learned the truth that is in Jesus. So in regard to your former way of life, before you had Jesus in your life, before you knew him, called him your Lord, your God, okay? So in regard to your former way of life, put off your old self and be made new in the attitudes of your mind and put on your new self, created to be like God, truly good and holy. Simply what God is trying to help us understand here is that once we've invited Christ into our life, we brought him into our heart and we're making that change, that there has to continually be this process of growth. And to have this process of growth, there needs to be change. And, and we do this. There's those other areas of our life that we don't mind changing, putting off old, putting on new. I mean, good grief. I mean, summer's here and you're out doing whatever it is, exercising, you're out working in the garden, you're working in the lawn, you know, you're getting yourself all dirty, all sweaty and smelly and all that kind of stuff. And at five o'clock, you're supposed to go have dinner at your friends. Do you just get in the car and go? I hope not. <laughs> Otherwise, they might not be your, or they're really, really good friends. You know, when it comes to that, usually most of us will go, we'll go inside, we'll take off our old stinky, sweaty clothes, and we'll shower, maybe, we'll shower, and we'll put on new something fresh. We're used to have, making that change when it comes to the physical aspect, and that seems so simple, but what we're going to be talking about over the next several weeks is making that change spiritually. And what I want us to talk about today, like I was saying before, is what are some, some preparations, some steps that we can be taking to get ourselves ready to make that change that God wants in our life? So first of all, you just got to ask God to start something new in your life. It's kind of like last week I said, hey, you want change? Just start. Well, one of the ways you can just start is by asking God to bring and start something and make something new in your life. Because God wants to know, are you really serious about changing? Are you serious about being that different guy, that different gal, and that's there? And, and a lot of times when I talk about this, people say, but Dave, is it really okay to continually ask God to change me? Is it okay to ask him for that? You know, and it's like, yeah, <laughs> that's kind of part of Jesus' job description of what he does. Remember in Revelations 21, 15, Jesus says, I'm going to make everything old. No, you know, I'm going to make everything boring. I'm going to make everything the same. Praise God, that's not what he said. I'm going to what? I'm going to make everything new because that's what he does. 
He transforms lives. He changes lives. And I think when we go to him and we ask him for that change, uh, a great prayer that we can pray is, is already been, you know, um, modeled for us is what David prayed in the 51st Psalm when he turned to God and he said, Lord, uh, uh, in, in the message paraphrase, it simply says this, God, make a fresh start in me. Your translation may say, God, create a clean heart in me. And, and we like that and we quote that a lot, but I think there's a lot of people that don't understand the context of what's happening here when he wrote this. You see, just before David wrote these words, God, make something new in me, create a clean heart in me, give me this fresh new start. Before he penned this is when he had that relationship with Bathsheba, that affair. And then he took her husband and put him all on the front lines so his life would be taken. He had just taken and, and two great sins, adultery and murder, this had happened. And then somebody comes and speaks the truth into his life about what he's doing. And that's when he falls on his knees and calls before God, God created me a clean heart. Help me change so I don't continue down this path to be this person that's done these things. Help me to change so I can be who you want me to be. Puts a whole new context when we hear it that, that way. But it's also good news for us because it helps us understand the powerful mercy and grace and forgiveness and love that is there because of God. I screwed up. Hey, I made a fiasco. God, help me create something new within me. And the awesome thing is we can change because that's the good news of the gospel. That's what Christianity is all about. We don't have to constantly be looking and, and focusing on the past and, and all that. I mean, this is what God says about our past in Isaiah 43. Forget the former things and don't dwell on the past, whether it's good or bad. Instead, God says, instead, look at the new things I'm going to do. They're already starting to happen. Can you see what I begin, begun to do? And you've, I'm sure, heard this illustration before. You know, if, there, if you're trying to move forward, if you're trying to go, you know, get past your past and move forward and start going in this new direction, if you're out in your car and you're going to drive wherever you're going to drive, you don't drive the whole time by looking in your rearview mirror, by looking at the past where you've been. Because we all know, I mean, you might make it a little wise, but sooner or later, you're going to have a crash. You're not going to get where you want to go. And God's like, look it, yeah, there's your past. And there may be steps you need to take to make things right that from wrongs that you've done. There may be all these different things that are happening, but I need you to focus on where we want to go. Learn from the past, but focus on where we want, where I want you to go. And maybe there's some changes you need to make to do that. And then secondly, pinpoint specifically what you want changed. I mean, Technically, you can't change generality. You can't just say, hey, God, change me and walk away. You've got to identify. I think, I think we all understand this. You cannot solve any problem until you first identify it as a problem, okay? I mean, you can sit there and say, oh, no, I'm not really in debt. Uh, as you figure out how to rob Peter to pay Paul, you know, I'm, I'm really not. No, no, I'm, I'm not really uh, habitually procrastinating. I mean, I'll deal with it tomorrow. I mean, we have all these things. I don't need help and we end up helpless. So the more specific we are about what you want God to change in your life, the easier it is for us to change and the faster it is for that change to happen in our life. So what I've done for you is when I was at the seminar once and, and kind of they were teaching and training us on this as, as pastors, uh, they gave us a checklist about change. And I, and I put that checklist in your handout that hopefully you got as you came in here and stuff. And, and, and I'm going to encourage you right now where you're sitting to take out a pen if you have one or whatever and start going through that checklist and going through those items and say, hey, is this an area where maybe I can change? These are suggestions of where maybe you possibly, you know, can change or need to change within your life because it's, it, it's something we need to be evaluating. When Paul was talking to those in Corinth, in Corinth he said this in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, look closely at yourselves do a self-examination. You know I'm, I'm big on that. Test yourselves to see if you're really living in the faith. You know, take a look at your life. Get honest where you're at. So here, here's, here's an opportunity, and, and I'm sure there could be other areas, but you know, like example, I think the first one there says connection to God. If you feel closer to God today than you ever have in your life, you don't need to check that one. But maybe it's you've I don't know, strayed from God, or you don't feel as close to God today as you did when you first gave your life to God, or, or maybe over the last six months you just feel further. There's one maybe you need to check that I need to change. 
And don't beat yourself up. I mean, after first service, I had one person come up and says, great, I had to circle the whole list. Thank you very much. Now I'm overwhelmed and I'm going home depressed, you know, and, and stuff. And I said, you're welcome. And uh, so, you know, maybe just go through and check a couple. Or if you do check them all, then just Oh, I have an extra step I didn't give them in first service. Circle ones that maybe you want to start on, you think, right away. But take that self-evaluation. It's important that we go through whatever that is, your priorities, you know, a, a relationship. I mean, your career, uh, I don't know, um, whatever it is, your parenting, your, is your calendar controlling you? Do you need to change your self-confidence? Your finances, is there an area, you know, where you need to reset a dream? I don't know what that is or what those may look like, but... I know we all have areas we need to change. And over the next several weeks, we're going to be taking this list like this, and we're going to be talking about the blessing that if we look at this and why if we change that, how we can be more of who God wants us to be in our life. But I also want to understand something here as we move forward. A lot of the times when I give homework or I give exercises like this, I know for different reasons, people don't like to do them. Um, and want to do them as far as that aspect goes. If I mean, if you're sitting there and don't have a pen, maybe you understand why you don't fill it out. Or if you really want to take it home and do more self-examination at home, I'm, I understand that at all. But if you're going to just sit there and say no and tuck it in your pocket and I'm never going to look at it and touch it again, then I just want to be out front and let you know that then, okay, then God showed you exactly the first step you need to change. It's called a heart attitude, all right? Because we all, we all, 10 fingers pointed here, they're all... We all need to change. That's why God says he's not done working on us yet. I mean, he sent his son to show us how to live and how we're supposed to do the things that we learn as we look through scripture, as we gather here and we're reminded of it. He showed us these things, but, but none of us are perfect. We're each and every day trying to be more like his son Christ, but we haven't been there, which means each and every day there's new areas that, or same areas we need to work on to change. And if we're unwilling to self-evaluate, if we're unwilling to sit there and take a look at that, then there's probably, that's showing your heart God brought you here so maybe you can hear your heart to say, okay, then I realize an area that I at least need to start on to bring change. Because we have to be careful. Because if, if we don't, we can end up like, well, when Paul was telling the Romans, the warning he gave them in Romans 12, 3, do not think you are better than you really are. Decide what you really are by the amount of faith that God has given you. So I recommend, I recommend that you take that and you look at it and start that. And then thirdly, Find someone to support you in your change. You had to know I was going to bring this up in here. Find someone to support you because you can't do it by yourself. A life change is just too big of something in your life, okay, to do it on your own. How many times have you heard me over the years, those of you that come here and, and that heard me say, if you could, you would, but what? You can't, so you don't. If I could make the changes without your help, I would, but I can't, so I don't. And the same is there for us. And again, the, the, you know, when we need help, we apply this to every other area of our life. I mean, uh, uh, your, your car breaks down, okay? And you, maybe you're not a mechanic, know a whole lot about it. Yes, um, there's YouTube videos that you could watch to take a look and to see maybe what's going on there, but maybe it even gets above your realm of what you can do or not do. And so where do you take your car for help? To a mechanic. Somebody who maybe knows a little bit more that can help you to get it fixed. You're, you're not feeling right. You feel a little whatever. So you go to the doctor. Doctor runs some tests. Oh, yeah, you got some clogged arteries. You're going to need a, this bypass. Not a problem, doc. I'm going to go home and I'm going to YouTube it, cut myself open. You know, I'll do the little bypass myself, show myself up. I'll be good and I'll go home. Sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? See, we do this. We look for people and we reach out to people for help in all other areas. And the most important area we need to make sure we're having help and support is in our spiritual walk in our life. Bringing people to be there. And I realized, 10 fingers pointed here, like I've seen that a lot during this, that requires humility to lean on other people, okay? Because as long as I think I can do it on my own, I can have it my way, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. That's why it hasn't worked so far. And there's so much in Scripture that talks about the importance of having others around us. Remember in Ecclesiastics? Ecclesiastics 4.12, a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer, and three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. It's not easily broken. We need that support of each other. A, a couple verses back, I don't think I put it on the screen, but in Ecclesiastics 4.10, it says, if one person falls, another can reach out and help, but people who are alone when they fall are in real trouble. And again, we're going to fall. We're not perfect. 
we're going to make mistakes. And we need people to be there with us, to help walk with us, to help guide and lead us and hold us accountable. See, there's one thing as we gather, as we come in each and every week and we gather, there's something that's such a blessing about this community. And if you don't hear anything else, I hope you can understand this, that community is God's antidote to discouragement, defeat, and failure. That's so important, I want to say it again. Community is God's antidote to discouragement and to defeat and failure. If you're feeling discouraged and defeated and, and, and fail, and maybe it's because there's something going on in your life that you're trying to do on your own and it's not working and you need people to pull along. You need to have that humility to step up and say, look at, I've got this issue. I've tried and I failed. I've tried and I can't. That's why it's not working. And I need someone to walk with me, to be with me, to help me through this part of it. I need to, I mean, that, that's why it is so important that we understand verses like in Romans where it says, since we're only one body, we belong to each other and each of us needs all the others. We need each other. You need me, I need you to be there, to help, to guide, and to, uh, to be a part, to be that family. That's what it means to be the family of God, you know? And, and, and that might be a different kind of loyalty than maybe you've never thought about before. But, you know, God says, look it, I've created my family to be there for each other. I mean, again, David, if he hadn't had this person that came along to him and got gut level on us right in his face, do you know what you just did? Do you understand King David, who you are, and speak the truth to him? I don't know what would happen with David. But because he had that person that came along and spoke that truth to him, he was able to pray that prayer that we talked about earlier. And I don't know what it is, but we need that ourselves. That's why in Hebrews, the writer said this, okay, let us not give up the habit, okay? And let us not give up the habit of meeting together. Instead, let us encourage one another. That's why we're talking about gathering each week. That's why we talk about small groups. That's why we talk about accountability partners, that it's there. And I realize COVID came in. And it doesn't matter the church, the size, the location, the denomination. <laughs> COVID messed it up for all believers to gather. Attendances in churches went down. Small groups went down. All of our meeting time. And, and I understand that. And we're working ourselves back to it. And I, I'm so thankful during that time that we had things like live stream. You know, the people could watch and we could, could still celebrate and learn and be challenged. And I'm still thankful we have live stream today, even though most, you know, we're, we're back to gathering. So people can get online. Those that are watching now can be here. They can check us out when we're sick and stuff like that, that we can watch. But I guess I want to give also a challenge and encouragement that, that being a part of the family of God, I, 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 I want to call us back into coming and being here. Okay. Because COVID also that it did all that, but COVID also brought some really bad habits. And we're in church. Let's have a massive confession. I realize it's real easy. It's real easy to get up on a Sunday morning and you look out and see an inch of snow and it's cold and say, I like Dave, but I don't know if I like him that much. <laughs> but to look at that and say, I'm just going to stay in my nice, snuzzled little house right here with my cup of coffee, sit on couch and watch live stream, Okay. Trust me, I understand how easy that is, but that's not what we're called to do in our gathering. We come together to give him the praise and glory that he so rightly deserves from his people, and we learn as we're learning here together, and we celebrate the joys and, and that, and, and, and we come in here, and then we go out for what, taking what we've learned and be the church he's called us to be. So I want to encourage you, you know, let's remember as we come into 23 to keep coming back, and also... Lastly, eliminate anything unhelpful or unhealthy. And this can be a real, real tough one. Because in Hebrews 12, 1, it says, we should remove anything from our lives that would get in the way and the sin that so easily holds us back. You know, I mean, again, we do this in other areas of our life. If you're going to start a diet, what do you do when you're going to start a diet? Okay, you go to your house, you go to your freezer, you go to your fridge, you go to your cupboards, and you pull out all the stuff that's unhealthy, right? That's not going to help. Now, I don't know how you do it. Some people will take and give it away. Some will throw it away. I open a fridge, see half a pizza, and think, that's not good for me. 
so I eat it all. So it's not there to hurt me in the future, okay? We all have our different ways, but whatever ways we get rid of that harmful stuff that's there, right? That junk food that has caused us to get this way, we get rid of the junk food so we can be healthy because we're concerned with our body. So we do that. Well, what about mental junk food? Oh, you know, if we want to bring change in our life, maybe there's some things that we need to unplug from, to cancel. I don't know what it is. To help us change our mind and, and, and start letting junk pour in off of that. Well, I don't know if it's social media or whatever. Again, when I was putting this together, looking at this, I was reading uh, uh, on, on some of the different uh, online magazines that I, I read from now and, and stuff and uh, Psychology Today and things like that. And, you know, it was talking about right now that depression is at the highest level it's ever been in young adults that's starting at age 30 all the way down to junior hires. It says it's the highest it's ever been because that age group is one of the highest consumers of social media. And so they're looking at social media. And again, social media can be good. It's what we do with it. You know, and, and, and they're looking at social media and they start to compare. They start to do the comparison. Well, my hair doesn't look like that. Well, why can't I have that? Why can't I have those? I don't have a husband that looks like that. I don't have a wife. That, why can't I sell these things and in a nine second make a six figure income? You know, as you're flipping through TikTok, why can't I do those dance moves? Why can't, and the social media, and then they hear all the different news that's out there that's, you know, news is very, 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 very rarely, 99% negative, 1% positive that you will hear and stuff that you get out there. And so they're bombarded. It's like, what hope is there? There's no hope. There's no hope for me. There's no hope for this world. And they're down and they're depressed and they're discouraged because they have forgotten about the greatest person that can bring them hope, Christ. And all that he's done, the greatest person that can bring them peace, Christ. And all that he's done, the greatest person that can bring us joy, Christ, because of what he has done. All that's focused away because all this other stuff gets, gets pulled into our mind. That's why, again, in Hebrews, he said, we must get rid of everything that slows down the progress from us growing and maturing and becoming like God's son, Jesus. Everything. So that can be one of the toughest out of all the steps as we prepare to look at change that we need to do. But it's a habit that we need to form, and we don't do it on our own. We do it together with people that are around us. So the question to ask yourself is, what is it you need to get rid of what is it you need to let go of and that's going to be different there might be some things that are similar for all of us but there's probably going to be some things that are different because of where we are in our life i mean maybe you know a, a relationship with a friend maybe there's stuff that like i said you're watching on social media you're reading material i don't know you're listening to maybe an attitude that you need to get rid of in colossians 3 7 to 10, it says this, you used to live, talking about before you became a Christian, you used to live according to your selfish desires. In other words, before I knew Christ, okay, I, I just lived for me. I didn't care about anybody else. I just wanted to make sure that me, myself, and I were, were satisfied. So I, you used to live according to your selfish desires when your life was dominated by them. But now you must get rid of all these things. And he gives a few examples of bad attitudes. Anger, hot temper, hating others. Ooh, I could do like a long series on that one. Really, what they look different than me. They vote different than me. I can't hate people to vote. Wow, you know, all these, I'm not supposed to hate others. No insults or filthy talk must ever come from your lips. And stop lying to each other, for you have put off your old self with its habits, and you have put on your new self. And that's what we're going to understand as we go over these next several weeks and i want to encourage you not to miss this series over the next four weeks as we're going to be talking about this and seeing the steps that we can take but what i want to encourage you as we get ready to come before these elements is that maybe you listen to what god said to job and this is what we pray for each other that we can follow as we go through this series in job chapter 11 you know job's having a hard time god says put your heart right job reach out to god and get rid of all the evil and wrong from your home then face the world again firm and courageous and he says if you do that here's some promises then all your troubles will fade from your memory like floods that are past and remembered no more your life will be brighter than the sunshine at noon and you'll live secure and full of hope that's god's promise amen not mine that when we understand these changes and we start to take those steps that that's 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 what god says look at this is what can come in to your life. So as we get ready to come before these 
elements up here. As we get ready to come before what they represent, I want us to take some time and, and just think and pray about what, what they represent to us. I mean, this is, this is an important, powerful time. You know, we come before these elements, and it's not just a little glass of juice and a cracker because you're hungry because I preached too long, <laughs> okay? It's not that. It's something that it represents that's very, very powerful to us. A love from a God that's hard for us to wrap our mind around. A sacrifice, a love that, you know, it's hard for us to make for family members, let alone those that are unlovable, but yet a sacrifice that God says, look it, I love you this much. I love you this much. And because I love you this much, I've given you my son. Don't forget that. And when you surrender to the truth of who my son is, then all this change that we're getting ready to talk about, that we've talked about here, you will have everything you need to make that change and to make it joyfully and to make it powerfully and to go out and to face this world, you know, each and every day of your life. Again, that's his promise, not mine. So as we come before these elements and remember and give thanks and praise for that, let us also just let God speak to our hearts, you know, and, and see what, what changes do I need to start making today? What one change should I start making today so I can be like the man of God, woman of God, that God called and created and wants me to be? I don't know what that is. I don't know what that's like, but we all do. So let's just go before him and pray. And if you, you want to pray with someone, I'm going to be up front here uh, while the worship team is going to be leading. Come on up. I'll pray if there's somebody with me. Keep coming. We have other leadership here that will be willing to be with you and to, and to pray with you. And, and all the elements are up front because our other stands got ruined during the flood. And so everybody's going to have to come up front to get the two cups and then go sit back down at your seat to have that time of meditation and prayer. If you're unable physically to come up, just raise your hand. We will get and bring that out to you. But let's go before God right now. Father, I thank you for this time that we can celebrate, that we can rejoice, that we can worship you through song, Father God, in all the different ways here. I thank you for that love that I just to talked about and what it means to us, the sacrifice of your son and, and, and the joy and the hope and the peace and the strength and all that that brings us, Heavenly Father. May we not take that lightly, but we, may we remember. But also, Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you that you love us so much that you don't want us to stay as we are, but Lord, each and every day, Lord, you're willing to work on us to help bring about change within our lives so we can be the men and women of God that you have called and created us to be. Lord, I thank you for what that means for us. And now, Lord, as we come before these elements, Lord, may we be reminded, may we be thankful, and may your Holy Spirit speak a truth into our lives so we know, Heavenly Father, changes that we can start making today to be those men and women of God. Thank you so much in Christ's name. Amen.
be seated for a moment here. Well, you heard me say, you know, we're glad and thankful because we have this young man <laughs> with us here that has joined and come on and youngish. youngish. There we go. We'll stay with that one. And uh, to be a part of, of the worship team and, and uh, um, be our worship leader here and, and stuff. And uh, hey, you know, we're going to ask him and he wants to place membership here. So kind of do what I've talked about already here this morning, as far as the membership aspect goes of committing himself to be here, to work with this family, to gather with this family, to worship and to go and, and accomplish whatever God's will is. And, and, and part of this whole membership that we do this for this reason and ask and, and, uh, and, and do that is exactly what we talked about earlier here today, because I'm going to ask some things of him. I'm going to ask some things of you. And it's, it's being there saying that you're willing to support, you're willing to be there, to pray, to love, to hold accountable. You know, to, to say, hey, um, uh, Josh, I haven't, how you doing, Keith? And, you know, talk with him and everything and, and, uh, and those kinds of things. And for him to do the same, uh, to be there with you. So, uh, um, Keith, I'm just going to ask. I know we've already had several conversations, so I already know the answers, but I want them to know and that, that I, I know that, uh, you know, you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior and, and that and have that relationship with him and are committed. And it's your desire to place membership here today to become a part of this family, to use your gifts, talents, and ability to serve and accomplish God's will here in this area. Is that true? Yes, sir. Amen. And are you willing to use whatever those are to be there, to support, to hold accountable, um, even though we can't see them all right now, uh, these people that are here in this family that God's brought you here? Absolutely. Hey. Amen. Amen. And family that's sitting here that's listening to this and, and everything, are you willing to be there for Keith and his wife, Michelle, and, and, and to be a part of praying for them, supporting them, encouraging them, challenging him, helping him in his walk and his growth with Christ? Because, you know, even though that we're both young-ish, we still need to constantly be changing to be more like his son, Christ. And we need those prayers. We need that, uh, that guidance to be there with it. Are you willing to do that? If so answer we will amen well what i'm going to do is i'm going to have a prayer for this time and i'm going to pray us out i'm going to ask keith to come on down and if you want to come forward and welcome into the fellowship i know he would greatly appreciate that so if you'd like to stand and join your hearts together with mine one more time let's do that father we thank you so much and i thank you for my brother 
I thank you for his faith. I thank you for his years of service. And I thank you for bringing him here to us to be a part of this family. And I thank you for that commitment to willing to be there, to walk with us, Father God, to support however with his gifts, talents, and ability he can. And Father, uh, also the, to, to build that uh, relationship with the people here, to know who he can call upon in this family that can be there to help and encourage him in his walk, Lord. We look forward, Father, for how we come together, we work together to help people understand, Lord, that there is a God that loves them, that there is, Father God, a God that desires to have them be a part. And, and, and each and every week as we gather here and we celebrate and we worship, Father God, I pray that you will give them the wisdom to lead us in a worship time, to prepare our hearts to hear your word. So when we hear our word and everything, Father, we're ready to go out to be that light, Lord. Thank you again, Father God, for what you have planned for us, already working to answer these prayers. And the, we thank you for this time of celebration. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless everyone.